town council to order. And I would like to ask you to join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. And Pastor Nina of the Church of the Good Shepherd will offer our invitation. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Let us pray. Lord, we come together tonight as the Town Council and the citizens of Kern. It is good to recognize how different we are. Our talents, our dreams, our backgrounds, our occupations. And it is good to know that when you created each of us, you broke the mold. No one is exactly like anyone else. Even our fingerprints and our voice tracks tell us how unique we are. Yet we thank you that we can take these differences and mobilize them for the good of Kearney. In our differences, we can work together to discern the best actions and move <coughs> together toward a common goal. Bless us as we meet together. Keep us mindful to be respectful of each other and open to your input for the best actions to build up our town and its resources for the best use by these citizens in your world. Thank you for our individuality and also for our common bond. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Here.
the business. The Copper Basin Chamber of Commerce request council letter number 1396. Madam Manager. Mayor Hostler. The Copper Basin Chamber of Commerce is planning for the Great Pumpkin, Trunk and Treat, Fall Festival, and Car Show on November 7th. The Trunk and Treat and Great Pumpkin on October 31st, 2015. They would like road closures from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. These events are planned for the entire tri community and will require authorization and support from the town attorney. The Chamber of Commerce is asking for permission to have Alvin Road closed from the crosswalk up the Copper Area Realty Office and the Old Bank of the West Building to the end of the County Building. The Chamber will not be blocking the entrance to Norms. They request the road be closed at 5 a.m. till 10 p.m. They would also like extra trash bins for this event. For the Fall Festival and Car Show, they would like um, from the Old Bank of the West Building to the end of the drugstore to be closed. Representatives um, from the Chamber, Angela is here and she has um, answers for any questions you may have. It's recommended that the council approve the road closures as stated above with the understanding they could change. All businesses uptown will be contacted by the chamber to notify them of the road closures during daytime hours. So if you have any questions, Angela is here to answer. Council, any questions for anything? Angela, do you have any answers for us? For any questions we have asked? <laughs> well, November 7th for the car show, that the road closure going to be from the... Actually, it's going to be from the old bit of the west to the ARC crosswalk. Oh, okay. okay. And then the parking lot um, area between um, the drugstore and ARC in that parking lot area. But what we usually close down. Okay. And again, for the trunk or tree, the great pumpkin will be from the old bank to the very end of the county building. We will not block any of um, Norm's entrances at all for that. Um, but for the car show, we will have those, all those businesses. And we notify them and let the businesses know. But those businesses also benefit from, from the events that we have up in that area. Resolution. Make a resolution or make a motion to approve the Chamber of Commerce request for closing streets on October 31st for the Great Pumpkin and on November 7th for the Fall Festival. Your second? Second. That's been seconded. And in discussion. All right. And just to let you all know, we just had our second um, community swap meet and uh, farmer's market. We had 16 vendors come out this time. So we had 10 the first time, we had 16 this time, so it's just going to get bigger and bigger. So it was a good success. So thank you guys. Thank you. All right. We have a move and that is the second. Any further discussion? I will call for the votes. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, say nay. All right, it is passed. Thank you very much. <coughs> and now, item B, possible discussion and possible approval of a resolution relating to the formation of a public safety coalition between four communities <coughs> for the development of public safety and the cost to be shared by members of the coalition. And this is council letter number 13. 97. Madam Manager. Mayor Hostler. Attached is a resolution for the counties of Tila and Pinal relating to the formation of a public safety coalition between four communities for the development of public safety and the costs to be shared by members of the coalition. The four communities are the town of Hayden, the town of Winkleman, which are in Gila County, the town of Kearney, and the town of Mammoth, which are in Pinal County. The four communities have indicated a desire to proceed with the exploration and research for the formation of a coalition by the director of the Arizona Department of Public Safety, and if a coalition is developed, the cost for police protection would be shared by each community that is a member of the coalition. This would be beneficial to the town of Kearney. 
The Town of Kearney desires to be included in the development of this coalition plan and will make a final decision once everything has been finalized. Thank you very much. And the text of the resolution is on the following page. Resolution number 15-72. Whether or not 
they would consider any cost, but I'm not, I am not aware of any cost at this time. This is just, this resolution is basically essentially just to keep talking. Because I don't want to make any decision that once this is done, we can't get out of it if we don't want to do it. Most intergovernmental agreements have an opt-out clause that would be there that would be negotiated. They, they can vary at any time from as slow as 30 days to 60 days to 90 days, six months. But basically, if there is an agreement, obviously opting out is going to be an issue that's going to basically be there, which the council would look at and, dis and discuss. So uh, tonight, basically hammering out the details, that's not, you know, that's not what's before it. That's not what's before you today. It's basically going to keep talking. It's whether or not the town of Kearney wishes to continue to participate in this discussion. For my part, I think we still need to have more discussion on this in, in, in its finite points. But I do agree that we might have to uh, go ahead and agree at this point to participate with the other towns in the discussion. And I, I myself, like you, Dan, have you know, reservations as to what it, all it means and how far we're going to go. But I, I think that overall we have to at least uh, for, forge out and see uh, where it leads. And then if we decide not to, then we have to make those decisions in that way. So, uh, so to that end, I would like to make a motion to uh, for the possible discussion or possible approval of a resolution relating to the formation of a public safety coalition between the four communities for the development of a public safety and the cost to be shared by members of the coalition, as stated in this. And do you wish to make specific reference to resolution 15-7? Uh, especially as cited in resolution 15-7-22. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, Rudy. Now, any further discussion? This is what I'm talking about. I just want to make, make, want to make sure that the town can make a opt-out if we Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to make sure we don't get stuck with an agreement. The vice mayor, I, I can feel the heat of I can feel the heat of the chair cooking underneath me. It's absolutely correct. There will be no agreement approved by the town unless it comes before the council. It's discussed and it's approved by the council. Any further discussion? Are we prepared to vote? All those in favor signify by saying aye. No. Aye. Opposed? It was carried unanimously. So thank you very much. That was good. That was good discussion. That was good thinking. <laughs> Possible discussion and possible approval of appointment of the mayor and one council member or a member of the community to represent Kearney on the Public Safety Coalition. This is Council Letter Number 1398, Madam Town Manager. Mayor Hostler, it is recommended the mayor and one council member or a member of the community be appointed to the Public Safety Coalition. The four communities of Hayden, Winkleman, Mammoth, and Kearney have indicated the desire to have the mayor, one council member, or a member of the community on the Public Safety Coalition. Council, you want to talk about it a bit? I would uh, respectfully request uh, that to, if there was going to be a council mem member uh, on this board, I would be most happy to serve on it. Yes, I think that it would be good for me to get involved in it and see what, see where it's going to go. Is there anyone else who cares to do that? I'm thinking that we should have uh, somebody from the public. Or the one 
person that wants to be on it, let them put a letter of interest in and then come back to the next council meeting and make the appointment. I think we should have somebody besides the council people on the board on that group. not wanting to, uh, to sit on that council ex officio or, you know, I kind of am willing to sit on it. Uh, ex officio because uh, the, the mayors, we've had this time since the premier's group, and now we've had it now, and even the superior wants to offer this, and we've developed some wonderful, positive, cooperative relations. Do you think it would be possible for us to go, go ahead and vote, since all the other towns are going to do mayor and council person, and then as uh, the initial group starts, then to modify it or open it up to more people instead of having two from each town, having the three, you know, so that we would have community input as well. But to initially start off with the two that was initially requested. Did the other towns already? I don't. I don't know what Winkleman has done, but um, I believe Mammoth appointed one council member. And I think they were looking for one member of the public this evening. Hayden appointed the um, uh, Thomas Lagunas, who used to be the vice mayor, as a member. And I don't think they. I don't think they appointed. I don't think they appointed someone else. But to to address the question, I think that this is just a talking point. That it could be expanded, but it probably would be an agreement of all the other communities to see. And, and as you know from meetings, if you get to a certain number of people, that it can become unwieldy. And so, um, but I believe that the meetings are open to the public, so people that are interested certainly can go listen and hear the process. And I would assume that perhaps some meetings are being, minutes are being made of those minutes, that minutes of the meeting that may be available. And if they're not, they may start doing it. Then there will certainly be on the internet reporting back to the individual councils. I still think we need a public person from the public involvement. I agree with Councilmember Gaffin too. I think it's very important to get the community involved. They also know what the needs part of the town and their expectations should also be part of the whole
one other person, whether it's a council person or, or someone from the public, to be decided at the next council meeting. So I hear a second. Really? Okay. Thank you. So it has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, any clarification on how we have done? The, the coalition meeting is on November 10th at 9 in Mass. So we'll have a special meeting before then. Okay. All right, any discussion? If not, then we will proceed to a vote. All those in favor of the content of Council Letter Number 1398 and our decision to get the information out into the community and then vote on the person who represent us by the next council meeting, whether it be special or regular, uh, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Uh, you opposed. Okay. Oh, all right, thank you, David. It is, uh, una it is not unanimous, but it is approved. Thank you. Participating in the same DPS program that we have been doing 
with the second group. Uh, um, also in the terms of the IGA, it also says either party may cancel this agreement at any time with 10 days written notice to the other party. Uh, if you were at the meeting, was that your understanding of that yes. meeting that they would still mm -hmm. continue with the Yes. And, that, and, that and I think that's what we're going to get clarification on tomorrow. Yes, we're going to get clarification. Uh, we did hear the same thing in that meeting with the deputy director. He has the final, actually, it's the director that's the final say on that, um, and the deputy director. So I think we should have had that next period of day, but Lucy came up with the mayor, I believe. I'm not really sure what happened, but we'll, we'll try to have that next period of day tomorrow. May I ask our attorney a question? If we, for example, took no action on this. We've already signed the agreement. We're already party to it. We were just putting out an additional ratification on the continuing for three more months or as necessary. Would that be seen as uh, an abrogation of the agreement at all? Mayor and council members, I generally don't like to give legal advice in public because there's an attorney-client confidence that's involved here. Uh, what? It would, it, but it would seem to me that the existing agreement that is in place would basically be kicking in and the issue would be the compensation as to who's going to pay it. If the council wishes to approve this tonight as it's presented, you have a 10-day out in this agreement. If the council wishes to get that question answered, you are going to have a special meeting on, I believe, at least the 9th of, you know, of next month, and you could bring this matter back at that time and basically have that issue clarified. Okay. But the concern, you know, the concern that we have is that I think that technically um, the last day was about October 15th, is that correct, on the prior agreement? October 9th. I believe the major war shall be at that meeting on November 9th, and I believe um, tentatively scheduled as something else comes up, the deputy director should be there. I don't want to quote that, but he should be there for November 10th. I apologize, November 10th. Council, shall we proceed to a I have a question on. Uh, on the IGA on under section seven procedures, it says the interim chief may promulgate written operational policies and procedures deemed necessary for the operation of the town police department for the duration of this agreement, provided that such are acceptable to the town as they affect that town. Uh, I, I, I wanted that language to be as clear as possible uh, because the town of Kearney makes the written uh, rules and uh, I just want to make sure that that the chief would know that even though this thing says he would promulgate it which is just basically to promote the the, the law or the decree but I'm, I'm still uh, not just that he posted or do whatever but that a lot of the, the any policies still have to go through the approval process and it it doesn't seem like this particular particular uh, section was very clear, at least from my reading. Let me clear your mind on that. Any policy either directed or any memorandum or anything does not uh, go into that agency until it, it's, uh, through the town manager with their approval and then it goes to the city attorney. Once that is approved, then, yeah, then, goes to the then we can implement it and it goes to the council. Right, so we, we follow it all. We follow it two years. It goes to her, city, and then over I know, but I'm just kind of clarifying what's written here. It's not clear to me that that chief could, would make policy when, I mean, he may execute it, but... Right. I think most of our policies and procedures were in, like, implemented by a, a Chief Terry Westbrock, and I believe that may have been the early 90s, mm -hmm. and 
when we went to an interim chief, when Chris Vasquez was the interim chief, he began looking at the policies and getting them updated. And I believe that Sergeant Blue has also followed that as well. And there are a number of agencies. Chief Carson did as well. Yeah, there, there are a number of agencies out there that have some uniform policies and procedures that are vetted by defense attorneys to make sure that they follow proper procedure and current case law that's out there. And I'm assuming that that's part of the process that we would be doing to update the policies. But it is correct that ultimately when it is a finished product, it will come to the council for review, discussion, and, and approval or disapproval. But we really do need to update our policies badly. No, no I, I agree that we have to update them. I just was wanting to make sure that this didn't um, give more latitude to promulgate possessing success, you know, and I understand the definition of promulgate. Uh, and it, it does it does say that you would promote or make widely known the idea or cause or whatever law was, was going to be put in effect. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that it says that whatever was acceptable to the town. But to the, and but I kind of wanted to put proof in it. But if the council is okay with the way it is written, then I would accept. I just wanted to raise the issue. And I do believe that section seven of the agreement does more than adequately cover that. Says that the property is the only uh, with the acceptance of the town. The town is the mayor's town. Thank you. As far as the rest of this agreement, until we find out for sure whether EPS is going to pay for uh, the chief salary, we can't do anything. I mean, as, mm -hmm. as far as the salary right here, over a month or two, we can't afford it. That's correct. Um, I think tomorrow, though, we will have clarification regarding um, correct? Yes, I will try to clarify for your business day one. Okay, we're going to have a special meeting in one two weeks to appoint the other person for the Can we move this at that meeting too? Can you make a motion in a second? Okay, I'll make a motion that we postpone this until our next meeting. Can we get confirmation from the special the meeting? The next special meeting. Until we get confirmation from the director of the DPS. I second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? And this would be a postponement of dealing with it. It is not a rejection. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Those opposed? It is carried Right now, we partner with the town of Mammoth 
and every two years we receive $224,000 in um, CDBG grants. Partnering with the town of Hayden, we would receive um, every three years um, $336,000. So three years. We can't wait three years to fix our stuff. You know, and it would be an order that's listed on the page. Yes. Exactly how we're going to do it, and then maybe how we could leverage it with some some other grant. You know, because some of these things could 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 help us get more money. But uh, I'm very much in favor of the of the, of the pooling of the, the money amongst three towns. Thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate that. I might add that uh, since we have received the thirty-five thousand dollar grant uh, for our 10-year plan, which is by itself part of the CDBG grant, um, we will better be able to scope that out plan for the succeeding years. Any other comments? All right, we will move to the vote. All those in favor of the IGA as stated, the three-year program qualifications succeeding three-year periods with the towns of Kearney, Mammoth, and Aden signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried unanimously. You just gave an answer or jump back. Alright. I'm gonna find out. Interesting. I agree. Possible discussion and possible approval of a scope of work from NCS Engineering for an on call agreement for task order number two, well number two, piping and filtration plant valve design in the amount of $6,000. Uh, council letter number 1401, Madam Manager. Excuse me, Mayor. 
Uh, what about the joint defense and common interest agreement that's also included in the packet? Are we going to vote on that separately? Oh. I believe that was an exhibit into the agreement. The interesting part is that on, on, the, on the main one, we're talking about joining monies, and yet the attachment, if this is the attachment, it's having to do with uh, the intergovernmental agreement for fire department dispatch services and any mitigation which may have come as a result of it. So it's like mixing apples and oranges, you know, differently. You know? That's, and that's a five on that. That's my fault on that. I should be talking about this. Okay. So we need to make that change. And we'll okay. So I can see it. It's talking about this, but on this thing it said fire department dispatch services that involve litigation. So if that's the case, I can see it. It's on the very first paragraph in the part. Surge 
And this is and what? And this is the we have the will. Yes. 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 And they they installed and the, the party the, who installed the piping, the original piping was Yellow Jacket. And they and will the, not come and um, redo it. But this stuff that they're putting in it to the This is what should have been done initially when they installed the, the well, the piping for the well. But this is different yeah, switching we, and stuff that they're having to put in to cure the problem yes, the, of the surge. The water surge yes. So when they put the well in, they, the way I understand that they didn't know that this Pretty switching was going to have to be in. Correct. So it wasn't Yellow Jacket's fault. They just did it. More or less. Well, I mean, the way they designed it is not. Whoever designed it to begin with screwed it's, up. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not designed hmm. properly. Really bad. Why doesn't okay. that surprise me? Thanks, Dave. Yeah, so what's your pleasure? work under both wells. I have been sending to CAG, to Ken Hebert, who is in charge of the grant, and also to um, William McCarthy at Will Dan. Because at some point in time, um, we're going to have to recoup um, those invoices because the town should not be having to pay for that. What I'm saying too, besides mm -hmm. that, when this work is done, we need to have it on paper that it's going to work with this installation. Okay. In other words, they are, we are going to put this in, and then we're going to come back six months later, and what they put in is not working. Right. We need to have it on paper that when they put it in, that they're backing it, and they're going to back it, that it keeps working. We aren't going to have to come back six months later and they're going to say, oh, well, we've got to change this. Okay. Because if, they, if they're engineering it and says it's got to work, then we need to have this all on paper saying that that's what they said and have them sign it. Any further questions? Comments? Are you? I forget. If we move this, we get to move to second. All right. No second. Pardon? No second. No second.
see sometimes, but it's good to see too often.
which most bigger agencies do have CAD system, the engineering system would, would affect. Since we're on the engineering system, we're going to start thinking about maybe moving out of Coppernet and going to another system because it's going down so much. So I'm going to bring that up in the council meeting. I'll say, I'm also going to bring up the next council meeting. We're looking, we've been looking for officers for the past uh, month now. Looking for what? Officers. Yes. Full-time officers, positions to fill. We're going to start looking for innovative ways or something to kind of throw out there to, 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 to get officers in, into the area. And one of the things I'd like to do, I'm going to bring it up uh, in the next council uh, meeting, is the townhouse. I, I've heard that there's been discussions about it before. Uh, possibly using it for the ambulance and, and the police officer or something like that. Um, I'm going to come up with a plan of action presented in front of the town council to see what, what way they want to go. That way it can kind of keep, uh, we, if we do get some officers coming from outside the town from Tucson, San Tan Valley, the Phoenix area that's hired here because they don't want them in the community, at least at somewhere they could stay and a house for the two or three or four days. Um, it's just sitting there, we can also have a vendor or a Contract that would come in and help out uh, uh, free of cost to finish up whatever's in the townhouse. So we're going to bring that up and apply the action for the next council meeting. So be prepared for that. And uh, that's it. Unless you have any questions. I don't know one. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> council, what is your pleasure on the reports? I'll make a motion to accept the reports. So we are second. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. It has been moved and seconded that we accept all the reports. Uh, in further discussion, all those in favor say aye. Um, aye. It was carried unanimously. And for there is this important item number 10. A little over now, that's not too bad, but I pretty good. Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, so move and second that we can adjourn. Any discussion? Great, it's not forever. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both is carried. We are adjourned.